the boy learns to swim at an early age. The pool is deep and frightening, but he is with his mother and she can touch the bottom. The boy spends much of his youth in the water with his mother. She calls this time therapy, which means playtime and fun. The man comes home to be with his mother. She has had another surgery, a hip replacement, her fifth. She is fighting a staph infection. If the virus resurfaces, doctors will remove her new hip and she will not walk again. The man has returned to support his parents but also to make a film about how a boy learns of his mother's disabilities and how that boy struggles to cope with her suffering and his dread. He intends the film to be cathartic. The man will purge himself of his anxiety and shame, just as his mother will grow strong and purge her infection. And they will finally put all of this behind them. The boy's first chore is to put his mother's socks and shoes on. Socks need to be right side out, but can go on either foot. Shoes have a right and a left. The heavy shoe always goes on the left foot. The boy notices that his friend's mothers have heels on both shoes. But those mothers don't have the toys that his mother has. Her closet is full of shining swords, suits of armor, stainless steel knives. The boy is a hunter of man-eating crocodiles. He's an explorer of steaming jungles. His mother explains that the toys are for her disability, that some were actually inside her body. When the boy shows his friends the closet, he tells them she is bulletproof. The man believes the first step to conquering fear is to confront it head on. He is looking closely at what he used to avoid. He is learning the things he didn't want to know about as a child. He is present. He is listening. He will not look away. The boy is big enough now to help his mother down the stairs. She walks slowly and grips his shoulder. Halfway down the first flight, she takes a step, a step like any other, and her hand squeezes him hard. She opens her mouth wide, and for a moment, nothing happens. When she screams, the boy's body grows cold and wet. His stomach starts to hurt. His mother catches her breath and smiles at him. She tells him, it's okay, I'm okay. His mother buys him a new game and he learns about surgery. When people are broken, they have surgery and they are fixed. His parents show him see-through pictures of how the doctors fixed his mother. The boy asks how the metal gets inside her leg, and he learns about scalpels and stitches. He learns that the rivers in her flesh are scars. The bumps were once thread and staples. His mother was cut open, and then she was sewn back together. The more the man looks at what scares him, the less power it has. 
His mother tells him the story behind each of her scars. 27 stories written into flesh. The man runs his finger along the jagged creases. The texture makes him nauseous at first, but it passes. He listens to his mother and her skin becomes familiar beneath his fingers. The doctors did not fix his mother. She is still falling down. The boy listens to her footsteps on the floor above him. He keeps track of her in the house. One day he hears screaming in the backyard and runs to the source. The boy's heart is hammering in his chest. It is a crow in a tree. One good thing comes from his mother's falls, the wheelchair. The boy helps his father assemble it. The pieces snap into place like Legos. The chair is strong and safe. He insists on pushing his mother everywhere. He pops wheelies and drives in circles and makes her laugh. He is in control. The boy hopes his mother will stay in the chair forever. Then, one morning, the wheelchair is gone. Down the hall, he hears the metallic rattle of his mother using her walker. The boy is holding his breath. His mother is walking now, but she will fall again. She cannot be fixed, but she won't stay in the chair. His stomach hurts, and it is her fault. She is careless and clumsy and weak. Her body is ugly. There is something in his stomach. He is sure of it. He holds his breath. The man thinks that filming has gone well. The footage looks good and he has received grants to continue filming. His mother's infection has vanished. She is growing stronger by the day and is moved by the man's commitment. He thinks he has redeemed himself for some of the selfishness of his youth. His mother is preparing dinner in the kitchen. She is on the phone. She is distracted. She loses her balance and falls over. She throws her arm out to protect her hip. The impact of the fall shatters the bones in her shoulder socket. She lands on the hip anyway and breaks the repaired femur. The man is in the next room with his father when he hears the scream and the crash. He runs to the kitchen and finds her on the floor. She says, it's broken. Someone is shouting her name from inside a phone. His father dials 911. And I am a boy again. My stomach hurts. I am terrified. I am angry. She is careless and selfish. She is weak. And in that moment, I realize there's nothing I can do. This is her life, and these are her choices. She will keep walking, and she will keep falling, and she will keep getting up. She is stubborn and defiant and strong. She is so strong. Paramedics are at the door. Mom pulls me close. She tells me, put the cream in the soup. 
I laugh out loud. I slip her shoe back on, and they take my mother away. As she resumes her routine of stitches and scars, pills and therapy, I take a deep breath, and I finish my film.